Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing and showcasing Battle Rating 4.0 Russia. Uh, we have this lineup set up for 4.0 and we also have a lineup set up for 3.7 that, that I'm going to show you after the 4.0 lineup. And we'll have two videos. Uh, the video I'm going to post uh, after this video will have the gameplay footage and in this video I'm going to explain and talk to you about all the vehicles that we have uh, that we can take out at uh, 4.0 and 3.7. Now uh, a lot of people would prefer to go at 4.0. Uh, the 4.0 is also a lucrative option to go with because then you will not face anything over 5.0. And at, at that battle rating, at 5.3, you get really uh, difficult uh, tanks to deal with, like the Tiger H1, the Panther A. So uh, if you take anything 4.3 and above, it, it will take you to uh, 5.3. So that, that might hurt facing really strong tanks at 5.3. So uh, it's much more lucrative to go with a 4.0 or 3.7 lineup that only up tiers you to 5.0 and a 4.7 that don't have any heavy tanks of, on, on the German side or, uh, or any Axis uh, tough uh, tanks at 5.3. So. The first uh, thing that we uh, the, we will see is the wow. Okay, I, I'm getting distracted by the Yak 90. Yeah, it's a pretty bird. <laughs> okay, anyway, so yeah, the T34 1942. So uh, this is the first tank in in the lineup, and this is your standard T34, but it has an improved turret. The turret has much more armor. It's got a 53 millimeter plate all over the turret, uh, including the turret net. And then it also has an extra 53 millimeter uh, turret uh, plate over here. It's like a, a bubble cheek. Uh, so what, it, what a turret does is it gives it almost 100 millimeters of protection. Uh, a little less than that, but uh, something along the lines. So yeah, uh, your turret is really strong for this, but your main weakness is your turret neck. Because the turret neck has only 53 millimeters of armor, but you can hide it. You can hide it if you put a bush or two on here. If you've got a bush or two, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that you know whether the bushes are a good thing to have in the game or not. But the thing is, if, if it can make your life easier along along the lines of everyone else is using ultra low quality, you can uh, you can also use all these facilities available to you to just. Uh, make your uh, make your time playing the game more comfortable. So you just put on some bushes like this and just protect yourself from uh, getting uh, memed in your turret neck. Uh, and you can you can you, you can make it like this so that your your bushes don't cover your driver hat. So that's even more of a meme because then they're gonna like oh open space and they're gonna hit this spot and they're gonna be like oh okay uh, we can't penetrate that. <laughs> so yeah you can you can totally do that. You can. You can force an enemy to uh, go for uh, your, uh, your strong points instead of your uh, weak points. Uh, so yeah, that's a much better option. Let's, let's fix this a little bit more. Uh, we'll put it right here. Uh, come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, right here, yeah. So you see, uh, the only thing visible is the driver hats. And anyone just looking at it, and instinctively, they will go either for your turret. Your turret is really trolly, really strong. and. If not, they're going to be like, oh, I want to center mass this uh, vehicle. They'll go for your hull and they'll see this open space and they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, short sure shot, man, just shoot it. And when they do, they'll come across this thing. This thing is a black hole. You can't go through it. Even 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 Tiger Twos have a lot of trouble going through it with their 88 millimeter cannons. So, okay, um, enough about bushes. Uh, let's proceed. I'm going to remove these. Wait just a second. Yeah. Well, just saying, that's, you, you could do that. I mean, a lot of people are using ultra quality, so, I mean, uh, it's not like this is something uh, against it. Anyway, I'm not against bushes. Anyway, okay, uh, moving ahead, uh, T-34-1941. This is the first uh, T-34 uh, that got the F-34 cannon. And uh, the only weakness that this, this, this tank has is the, the, the fact that it doesn't have that, that trolley driver's hatch. Um, uh, and also, I think uh, there's some ammunition type that it lacks. Uh, no, it's got, uh, yeah, it lacks APCR. Okay, 
So uh, other than that, uh, it, it doesn't have the driver hatch and it lacks APCR. Other than that, it's your standard T34. The standard T34 turret comes with this uh, V-shaped uh, turret. You got really trolly sides. Uh, you got some armor here, track armor as well. Let's do this. And so the, this thing is really, really hard to penetrate if someone it's impossible to penetrate at this angle. So if someone shoots you over here, they're gonna bounce. If someone shoots you over here, they're gonna bounce. But these cheeks, the turret cheeks, they're really weak. Even a whirlwind with this Panzer Granat 40 can go through it and just 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 slice through your turret armor. Other than that, your up your upper front plate is not that protected due to the the the, the, the absence of the driver's hatch, the, the 75 millimeter driver's hatch. Other than that, just uh, play it like a standard T-34, angle it, and just, you know, flank, and uh, you'll have a great time with it. Uh, coming over to the T-34E STZ. Now, this is the final iteration, uh, the most modern uh, T-34 that there is uh, for the 76 millimeter cannons. Uh, you've got a, a reinforced upper front plate with an extra a bit of armor, a 15 millimeter plate right here, uh, all over the upper front plate, and you've got your standard 44 millimeter plate, and then you have the driver's hatch that's got a 75 millimeter armor for the upper front plate. So, uh, other than that, uh, you have a modified uh, turret. Uh, what the turret has m much more angles now. It's got this groove that, that cuts over here that they added, uh, these these can bounce even more shots. Like for example, you're at 4.0 and you get put up against a, a, a Panzer 3M at 3.0. You're in full, uh, you are the top tier and the Panzer 3M is in an up tier. So for example, it shoots you, sorry, what am I doing? Okay, so if a Panzer 3M shoots you in the turret and goes through that exact location, because the Panzer 3M right now is a pretty, uh, uh, it's a, it's a pretty popular tank to play. A lot of people are playing it. So at 500 meters, you're practically immune. Uh, but even at close range, they'll have a lot of difficulty going through it. So these angles are really nice to have. They provide you a lot of protection. And the turret is even more difficult to engage. But they can still engage you to the flat bits. But don't give them that uh, stable target. Just keep on moving the turret. Keep on moving the hull. Angle it 45 degrees and you are practically immune other than this part, but not a lot of players are going to penetrate you over here. They'll just instinctively, through muscle memory, start focusing on the center mass, they'll just keep bouncing, they'll go for the turret and they'll get... Because obviously you're gonna also going to be shooting back, so it's not like they're going to have an easy, easy target, easy time with it. So coming over uh, to the next is the KV-1S. The KV-1S is your standard KV, but with a slightly less protected turret. Now, it does say 82 millimeters of protection, uh, but that is really uh, not going to do you much good if someone penetrates you. A lot of things can penetrate it, and because it's such a huge uh, flat part over here, a lot of people are going to penetrate you right here. Uh, with where you get a maximum uh, uh, protection of almost uh, 100 millimeters, 86 millimeters. So people are, people will try to go through it, and they can easily go through it. Especially the the the, the British um, the, the British ammunition, uh, the the US uh, 75, uh, the the German Panzer 4 F2s will slice through it. The Panzer 4G, uh, the Panzer 4J, the Panzer 4H. So all the Panzer 4s can go through it. Even Panzer 3s uh, will have no difficulty going through it. Uh, it's got, uh, other than that, you play it like a KV, you just angle it, people are gonna go for the hull. Uh, your upper front plate and your upper hull over here is really strong, just angle it up and not, no, not a lot of uh, ammunition can, uh, ammo types can go through it. Keep on moving your turret. You have the, the side that you can just, if you, if, you, if you give this side to the enemy, and move your turret out of the way and a lot of players might shoot you here and they'll bounce off here um, other than that your lower front front plate is a weakness but a lot of players will avoid it it's just just naturally instinctively a lot of players are going to go for this flat bit over here or your turret so uh, uh, but then again this is one of the weak spots uh, you can really uh, punch through this easily and uh, knock a kv1s out next you have the kv2 
Uh, this is the legendary KV-2 with 152 millimeter howitzer. Now, my biggest gripe with this is that uh, this thing right here. You see, at a stock uh, circumstance, it's, it's got 43 and a half second uh, uh, reload. That, that's just insanely a lot. And even for an expert crew with the reloading maxed out, uh, maybe I can get some more reload with the leadership. Yeah, just let's see. Yeah, just this slight maybe like a I'll shave off like how maybe like a quarter of a second or maybe two quarters or half a second but then again it's got a really bad later reload and other than that uh, the ammunition got a lot of nerves uh, like for example the HE used to be a meme, meme shot you just lob it and just explodes whatever it touches but now it's not that good but you can use this uh, the, the PB35 the APC BC it's still pretty good um, it, it's got a, a lot of explosive mass at 3.15 kilograms and um, you can you can cause a lot of damage if this thing penetrates. So yeah, you can use this, it's possible to use this. And we've got a trusty Teddy to guide our shots and also the Soviet star so that Stalin can guide our shots. <laughs> okay, next we have the KV-1L11. Now I would have loved to show you guys the KV-1E but sadly I don't have it. I haven't purchased it. Now that is one of the vehicles that you could have used at 4.0. It's a really good vehicle considering that a volumetric armor up update, it, it really made that vehicle shine and a lot of people are having a lot of fun with it. But then again, if you, even if you don't have it, you've got the KV-1 L11. Uh, it's got a, a slightly uh, lesser performing cannon, uh, the BR-350A fuse, uh, but, the, but the biggest problem is that it, it has a muzzle velocity uh, significantly lower than the regular uh, F-34 cannons. Uh, it's got a 615 meters per second muzzle velocity, but and also the penetration isn't that good. But then again, uh, at 4.0, at, at 3.7, uh, there's not a lot of targets that have more armor uh, that you need to penetrate. 75 millimeters of armor, uh, even at 500 meters, if you have 69, 76, you could still, uh, you know, do some damage with it. So just close up on the enemy and start brawling and then you can use this thing at long ranges and then use this thing at shorter ranges to take out the enemy. So, but, but, but this thing at 4.0, we, we will be using it as a backup if required. So the next thing is the Peshka 283. Uh, this is a fantastic bird. Uh, you get a bombing site with uh, uh, two 500 kilogram bombs. Now you can also take uh, the 200, four 250 kilogram bombs. Um, but then again, uh, if you are good at bombing, only then take these because if you mess up, if your bombs just go like a few feet away from the target, let's see, uh, if you look at the uh, FAB 250s, uh, the radius of destruction of armored vehicles is 8 meters. So if your bomb lands within 8 meters, you will have some, uh, you will have uh, an explosion that will trigger the vehicle destruction and uh, but then again, if you are away from that, like, like, so you would not get that much damage on it. it. Might hurt the vehicle, but not probably kill it. Probably cripple it. You can use the 500 kilogram bombs, the Fab 500s. They're really good. And you, you can have uh, 113 millimeter of penetration, and then destruction at 12 meters, and the radius is 139 meters. So it's really good as opposed to this thing. Uh, but then you only get two of these and four of these, so it's like a balance. You can you can balance that out. Other than that, you can also use the RBS 132s. These rockets are AP rockets. They they penetrate the armor and then explode on the inside of the tank. Uh, but hitting them is a little difficult uh, because you need a lot of practice with these because they're they're mounted quite far out on the wings. So you have to anticipate when you are going in for a rocket strafe. The where the rockets are gonna hit, so you'll just have to uh, uh, give a bit of a uh, uh, like a lead to it, so that you just put your aim slightly to the left, and, and then you might be able to hit your target. Or you can use these RBS-132 and just uh, spam the rockets uh, at a target. And they might make the target explode because they have a 40 millimeter uh, uh, penetration uh, and they're HE almost like a four, four, four kilograms. Let's see. The four kilograms of explosive mass on these things, yeah, 4.9, five, almost five kilograms of explosive mass. 
And so the next thing that we have is the ZIS 1294KM. Uh, you could use this or you could use the BDR-152. Uh, this is also pretty good. Uh, it's, it's got amazing penetration for its uh, KPVTs. But it's a post-war, for example, you don't feel like it, it's ruining your immersion for the World War II vehicles. You can always take the ZIS-12. So the ZIS-12 has uh, two 25mm cannons and it's really fast. Um, you've got four crew, two, two guys over here, two guys over here, and you get almost 40, uh, again, 55 millimeter of penetration at zero degrees at, at almost point blank. And uh, you could possibly meme with this, like just zip around the battlefield, get on the side of a vehicle and really hurt them. And also uh, these, uh, the, the, the FIT, the fragmentation in, in Fincendieri tracer shells, uh, they've got a great muzzle velocity at 910 uh, meters a second. And uh, it, it, once these things connect with the plane's wings, they just sh get shredded. So yeah, this is a great vehicle to have. Uh, other than that, if you take the BDR-152, let's see here, uh, it's got APIT and IAI, I, 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 uh, the immediate action incendiary bullets and APIT, it's got, it gives you almost with the API C, the CERM core shot gives you 45 millimeters of penetration. So you can also use this uh, and uh, it's up to you. You can just, you know, uh, see what suits your playstyle better. You can use whatever you like better and uh, you can have fun with it. Anyway, so let's move on. We have the Yak-9T. This thing is practically the A-10. The A-10 of the uh, Russian tech tree. Uh, you can have the 37mm cannon on it, loaded up with armored targets. And uh, it's got a 60mm pen from top. And you can really hurt uh, ground vehicles with it. From top, uh, you can really take out their engines you can hit the crew compartment cripple them and then you have the 12.7 berezin ub machine gun you can strafe uh, open top vehicles or if you see uh, that there's a lot of enemy air presence just take the air targets and just delete them with your uh, fridge launcher that is the ns37 <laughs> this hurt them really bad so yeah this is the 4.0 lineup uh, next we have the 3.7 lineup for the 3.7 lineup, we have the T34-1940. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have these. Uh, the, the armor update happened, and then these masks just started float in the air. It's like a spooky T34. For it, it's perfect for the Spooktober uh, T34 festival that I'm going to have for myself. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, this is your. This is the very first T34. Uh, that, that they ever made. It's got the L11 cannon, uh, same as the one on the KV-1 uh, L11. Uh, the only drawback to this is lower muzzle velocity and lack of variety of higher penetrating AP shells. And you have the BR-350 uh, SP for the APBC. You can penetrate 93 millimeters of armor at uh, point blank and uh, zero degrees and uh, you, you can make use of it. It, it works in down tiers, but uh, this is you can use this as a backup at 3.7. Next, we have the T34-1942, same tank as we described in the previous uh, whole uh, lineup, and this is T34-1941. We got the KV-1 L11, and uh, we'll take the Yak-10 29K, the milk truck. It's got an amazing cannon to it. It's got the BR-361 shell APHEBC. Uh, it, it does a 121 millimeter penetration at point blank zero degrees and 813 meters a second with 150 grams of explosive mass. It's really good. Uh, you can practically take it at any tier and blow up any tank with it. Uh, okay, not exactly 7.7 .7 or 6.7, but then again, you can you can really make it work at any BR. But the thing is, uh, it's got no armor. All the crew is out in the open. Here we go, Ivan and. Tawarish just chilling and enjoying themselves anyway. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, for for the cast, we have the IL-2M Type 3. Uh, we take the two RBS-132 rockets and you've got two cannons over here, the YVA-23mm cannons. These are, these are really good. 
these are the best 23 mils in in the game for the Russian tree. They've they've got uh, almost 37 millimeters of uh, not almost they have 37 millimeters of penetration with API shell and they can really hurt vehicles. Nothing has top armor uh, that can deflect these these shells. So you can practically use this as a, a tank buster that the IL-2M was and uh, the legendary IL-2M and just uh, just a, a treat to fly this thing. You, you also get uh, a bomb bay with uh, with, with with four uh, I think yeah, four four hundred kilogram bombs. Or you can take uh, two, two 250 kilogram bombs. I like to take uh, uh, 400 kilogram bombs because they are single drop, and also if you are good at bombing, you can make you can you can practically destroy four targets, and then you have your rockets that you can use. But then again, if you're not okay with that that option, and you want to be quick to drop your bombs and go to um, uh, ground counting with your uh, 23 mils uh, the cannons you can totally take the 250 kilogram bombs this is a single drop you just drop it on target just go up spot another target and then dive on top of it open up with the 23 mils next we have the BDR 152 um, we explained this thing in the previous uh, lineup and we have the ZIS 12 94 km the milk truck with a 25 millimeter <laughs> uh, uh, anti-aircraft gun it's really good you'll have a lot of fun with it next we have the Yak 9B now we could use a lot of other planes as well, like for example the the, the Tisma or the uh, other Peshkas. But the reason that I'm showcasing this is because this is a mostly an overlooked vehicle, uh, and uh, this this plane has a secret compartment. It's got 400 kilogram bombs right here, tucked in here really nicely and you, they're single drop and if you are good at using them you can practically take out four targets and then after you're done taking out your four targets just take out uh, air targets with your 20 mil and your 12.7 and with the amazing performance that the Yak-9 offers just get rid of the four bombs and you can have a practical uh, air superiority practically an air superiority fighter in, in the game so yeah, these are the two lineups, and we are going to showcase them uh, the, in, in the in the battle in the gameplay uh, in the next video. So you guys might want to check out the next video for the gameplay footage. All right, guys, I hope you I hope you ha guys have learned something over here, and I uh, hope you guys can enjoy the footage uh, to come in the next video. Let me know what you think in the comment below, and uh, uh, we'll see what we can do about it. All right, see ya.